hold a PhD in civil engineering from the University of Johannesburg, South Africa, in the year 2021, right? 2021, with civil engineering. And uh, in the year 2010, I started my journey to be the technical director of Cousin Plus Company Limited. I, in person, is the CEO of Leader Ghana Limited. So we do building consultancy, design, survey, and project management. So we came in as Leader Ghana Limited to manage Cousin Plus business as a bigger pool. I started as a big layer. I learned the trick on the road, on the street. Then I went back to a technical school to do block work and concrete craft. I was successful, so I had to progress to do what we call the general course in construction. Today they call it GCC. So I moved on to do construction technician part one. That is CTC part one. I was successful. All that happened in Accra, Technical Polytechnic, uh, Technical University. So um, my whole life has been Accra City Campus. Yeah. So I went to do my construction technician part two, City and Girls of London. 95, 96, I was successful. I wrote seven papers, I had five distinctions and two credits. So there was then head of department called Mr. Coleman, who got the access to create a civil engineering course. And they were looking for good students that can feature to work towards the accreditation of the civil engineering program. I did, did apply to go to Kwame Nkrumah University Center of Technology. He called me that. My son, you need to help this university to move on. So you're going to be here. We'll support you. I'll give you accommodation. I'll pay for your first year accommodation. He did pay for me, and I started a civil engineering program at Accra, then Polytechnic, today Technical University that I'm proud of. So I graduated in the year 2000. October thereabout with an HND in civil engineering. Prior to the graduation, there was a firm that came from Ireland called PW Ghana, who had a contract to construct and expand the Kutuka International Airport. So they came to look out for students from the civil engineering department. They were looking up for best four or five students. I had a chance to be associated, so we went there on a brief internship. And I was the only one selected at the end of the internship to stay, to do my national service. That gave me the industrial exposure. And credit still goes to my school, Accra Technical University for giving me that opportunity and the challenge to be able to have access to the engineering industry. I think I got to the industry level where I had an opportunity to work. To, to go ahead, I think we had about other students from then other polytechnics that were also on internship from Kumasi, Cape Coast, I think then there was all about three polytechnics. Accra, who I've forgotten the third one, Kumasi, or only two polytechnics. So it became more of a competition. You need to pride yourself, work hard for the image of your institution. So it will become academic, more competition. And that is all I said that I excelled. I became 
an assistant site engineer how to write with a very good salary at the time. We expanded the Kubuka International Airport. I was a very young civil engineer at the time. We were supposed to lay the aviation ground lights with a tolerance of plus five millimeters. I led the team to achieve it. We laid the bituminous asphalt to gain a very smooth and a touchable runway, runway. And we have to create some grooving that when the plate touches, grabs. We did all these projects. And I asked, how did I acquire this knowledge? Where did I go to have this knowledge? But I think that it all came from a current technical university. You would think that you are learning nothing in the school, but it is a formative stage that it prepares you for the job market. There is that discipline, promptness, delivery of assignments, and you have to compete with a good class of students from GSTS and other renowned institutions, Presec and other schools in the classroom to be able to stand tall among your peers. There was a time I was a little bad boy. I went to uh, Adabraka to have a bottle of drinks. So I got to the spot and that was Mr. Fatuna de Sitte. <laughs> <laughs> and I had his exams to write the following day. Wow. <laughs> so it was a Sunday or Adabraka to one of them who trying to have fun with friends. And I saw my lecture, I said, he said, Laurent, are you here to have a drink? And I said, no, I just want to eat. I said, no, I know you drink. Come and sit down. <laughs> so straightly, he bought me the first drink of Guinness, bottle of Guinness. I also gave the second chance, and we ended up sharing about three bottles each. And I thought that it ends there. The following morning, and I was in the exam hall, ready for my question paper, he walked past. I said, ah, Lawrence, you think you are here to write the exam to pass? Why are you not the one drinking Guinness with me? <laughs> Were you a part of the student leadership in the SRC in you know, I was more of a, a part-time leader or unofficial tutor to my colleagues. Okay. Because uh, most of friends who come to school, the workers, they come very late. I have to have a chance to explain what has been done in school to them. So some will tell you, we cannot be in school, we'll come in the afternoon for you to guide us. And I'll collect some small, small points for them. Then I'll support them to explain the, the learning. And also, I was the PRESAC organizer. Yes, okay. at our time, to 1999 to 2000, I won the election by one vote and I became the PESAC organizer on campus. And uh, the first time in the history of PESAC we were able to organize an excursion and a float where other schools now began to copy from us. It started with all Accra, Poly and the engineering department. And we also had an award where people we contested, we presented uh, some had some television, some few items to few selected schools in the uh, School of Engineering. It was started with my year meet in the year 2000, where well, before we left. So we did a lot as a student leader, but I never had the interest to become an SRC executive because uh, the civil engineering study will barely permit you to have other conferences and gatherings because it's demanding and because we're the first group to win. There are only three textbooks in the library that you have to write your names to go and pick and do your work. So we were a class of about 29 and we graduated about 19 in class. So referred and other things were affecting people. So I better run for my studies 
than uh, doing much of the student work. But I was part of it at the dean and the faculty level. That's what I did. Talking about your, your, your experiences, life experiences on campus, do you remember some colleagues for some activities or their life on campus? When you sit back now, it is like, hey, those days when we were in school. Oh, yeah, my closest pal, by name Kwame Bedding Jr. He was uh, the Zulu linguist at the time, and he's currently a, re a retired military officer in the UK Army and a pastor in the UK. I think I met him on the 28th of January to share a drink and have some few discussions. And uh, I have this guy, I can call him by the nickname, I think we call him at the time, Bai Toto. <laughs> Bai Toto is now the head of HR of uh, Stambik Bank Ghana. Okay. So it tells you the crop of friends that I had at the time. Mm. A few of them are also in the United States doing other endeavors to profit their lives. And I still meet my friends anyway, those are in Ghana, we meet and talk and have some good time together. But uh, I mentioned affectionately that my room 304. That is a hostel. My hostel room is the power of business. Okay. It becomes like the parliament where issues have to come for direction. That means you created your own caucus. In yes. your room? Yes, of course, because the engineering department controls any elections on campus. If you want to become an SRC president, at the time you need to come to room 304. And that time, the SRC president lives in room 316. So we said that if you want to be the SRC president, you have to come to 304, you have to stay in 360. Any other floor, you will lose the election. This, this is a fun time in school. Of course, we had a good time. You know? And you begin to realize that you, you are making decisions and you are taking leadership positions like uh, uh, advisors to the president, or the council of state. Eh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The whole combining the academic, the fun time, the financial challenges, and then you having to struggle throughout and everything. Would you say that your education formation in Akwaka is not time? Of course, you had formation in other um, institutions. Your resume tells it all. But for Akwaka University, would you say it has been worth it? A solid foundation for that matter. It's a center of discipline if you make yourself available. And that is what I do. It makes you unique amongst a lot because you stand out if you spend time to give your all to the studies. I got to Accra Polytechnic as a brick layer to go and learn com skills. Where they bring com skills and my first attempt I filmed everything because as a technical brick layer I said, oh you have to study. And the most difficult thing I've taken time to learn over the years has been Come schools and English because I have a technical talk to you that to be successful, you should learn to communicate and communicate very well. By not just to pass your exams and be on the streets to be used by other people. And it has helped. So I did the educational structure, the system of our car for the technique, maybe an 80 or 85%. Leave the 53% for industry work, utensils and industrial products. I think a couple of techniques is extremely, you see, unfortunately, I'm still using a couple of techniques. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of technical university. You know, after the convention, by virtue of law, we inherit all our duties uh, and assets of it. Okay. We understand. So, if Accra Technical University has been able to bring out the best of one of their own that are managing a business here that has about 240 staffs. I have moved from raw civil engineering to oil engineering 
We have our seven fields. We have about 240 workers. We have uh, 17 police trucks working for government, work and abusing products to the airport, and about 10 to 20 trucks calling to the mines, Andrewwood, Ghana Manganese, and uh, uh, Benso Go Free the Mines. What else can I do to my school? I need to proud them and tell them they've done me so well that I've come out to who I am today. I want to believe that Hudson is not the only place you have worked no, no. at the school. Would you want to take us on that journey? Yes, in great. Like I yes. left school with an internship with PW Ghana, which I did mention earlier, that I stayed there to do a five million Ghana a dollar project for the runway extension at the Kutuka International Airport. I was the youngest engineer who has the chance to even have go to aviation management and board project meetings. So it is an Accra Polytechnic student. I look at people at the meeting coming from Takwa School of Mines, Kwame uh, Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and etc. So I don't have any of my friends around to also talk with. A Polytechnic student said, okay, I can start my school and go. That's what I did. I became a head of department at PW Ghana to lead the survey team, engineering survey to do setting up of projects and the road mapping and protocol construction and lay the pavement into layers. That's what I did at PW Ghana at the Kotoka International Airport Project Phase 2 Rehabilitation. I left there to Michelity Company Limited in the year 2006 to do the African Cup of Nations preparation for CAN 2008 as the head of engineering. We were on the original sports stadium, the other project in Kumasi by Kansa and other few projects in Tamale and uh, Pesipong in the, the Western region. I was the head of survey, we did that project. I set out the entire 2,700 stanchion columns with a bearing and degree movement. And we were successful the fourth time. The first time I got to know how to mark out a football pitch and form the orientation to bring into interaction the audience. He then just set our football pitch. If you don't set it out properly, you will notice that some spectators will be at the blind side of the pitch. Even though they can still see on the pitch, but they'll be seeing shadows. And so I had that experience through reading and the preambles to be able to set it out, which I did successfully. I left on to do another project for the Utility Company Limited, the first ever artificial turf built and built in Ghana was led by an alumni of Accra Technical University at the Red Bull Soccer Academy at Soccer Coffee. I don't know how they call it today. We go to Sokal Coffee on the Kombonyo Road. Yeah. I led a team to do the first ever artificial pitch using the geotextile material to lay it and finish it properly. I left there again in the year 2009 to the GNI5 project, currently the Moving Peak Hotel Ambassador Hotel. And uh, the project was entirely late. We had schedule for about uh, six months. So I became the night shift manager to bring the project to meet the timeline. We did a good job and we achieved target without challenges. I went ahead 
I think it's the year 2009, there about, to start around the Tetequashi, the Villagio project. To completion, it went successfully. And so my life has been projects upon projects, consultancy and engineering. So the major projects until the year 2015 and beyond. If you profile civil engineers, yes, Lawrence you know, Adu will be one of them to consult for projects or to be employed by the employers. So this means the gift, the knowledge acquired from Accra State University. One thing that you cannot take from him is that he is somebody, I don't know how to say it, but uh, Every chapter you go into, he is there. If you are talking about finance, you think he's an, uh, an a finance expert. If you are talking about transport, you never know his background in civil engineering. When you are talking about uh, uh, safety, then he comes in. Then you wonder uh, what kind of a dog is that? Because he is so learned and being with him every day, you learn a lot. I would say he is the best. He's the best boss. I wish there could be a way to express that more better. But he knows uh, we cherish him so much and we want him to continue taking care of us as he always does. In the course of our discussion, I spotted this beautiful arena of your office. And for this, we want to talk about your achievement because these medals and plaques and other things here, I want to really present some achievements of your company. Can you just yes, thank you. Us? So we belong to a competitive industry where we do an annual review of our performance. So we contested for oil and gas award, the seventh, eighth, and the ninth edition. Oil and gas award is for the oil petroleum industry up and downstream. So we had the first time became the Hollage Company of the Year, and then uh, we became the, the most safe business destination of the year. And then uh, we have the other ones, which is we are the Logistics Company of the Year, and a company that do delivery to the airport and other companies without uh, product contamination. So the award are few, but I think that it all happened within a timeline of three years, around about seven to eight hours. So we are doing very well as a business. So my wife and the children understand my role, that is a difficult one. Unless there are emergencies, they reach out to me maybe three times in a day. Or I do for us to find out how we are all fair. And I spent time to personally teach mathematics, art, and science on weekends. If I'm not traveled, I spent time to go through, review their weekly assignments, and uh, check their results. And you should tell me why you think you cannot do better than you are doing, or why you are not doing well. Mm -hmm. So we talk as family, and if my phones get busy after work, then it's now a family time. Sure. I still have my mom and my grandmother alive at the age of 102, so I'm more of a family person. My dad retired as an appeal court judge and we still talk as a family so my life is not entirely work but i'm also a family person i spend time with a family i'm also a catholic and a devoted catholic as we are talking um, in the season of lent which we don't normally bring to the public but it's all of yours that anybody who knows a catholic Tell you we are season of life. So I've also spent time and I worship with uh, St. Charles Borromeo Catholic Church at Olivier, 
and I've been the head of their project council for the last seven years. I was the last boy among the nine children and uh, had other four big brothers and uh, four, five bra four brothers and uh, three sisters. So I think two of them are older than me and all the boys are the elderly ones. Unfortunately, we've lost two of them, and uh, so talking about family, I've ended up absorbing the children. I read anything John Grisham, the lawsuit, the Pelican Brief, the Testament, and I've read all of them. The Runaway Jury. I've read extensively. My favorite books that I read, novels, is all about John Grisham. And I still read. So if there's any new one, I try to pick one and put it on my shelf and read. So I spend time to read. I have about six. From this morning, so I have the university working with me here. What I've come to realize is that the youths and the people that we employ today are always waiting for a straight jacket instruction. They are not being innovative. Do something impressive for people to correct your wrongs. And so you are doing well, but you can do better. And we should not, the youth should not be unnecessarily too smart to think that they are too in, they are so intelligent that they can outwit their employers or their teachers or put foreign unedited information into their thesis and documentations and think that they can walk away and graduate and become a holder of a degree or a master's certificate. In the industry, it will expose you. You need to mentor them. So I would want to have for us and have conversation with them and interaction to tell them what they can do and what they are capable of doing. Where you find yourself in school, you are a failure, but strategically you need to focus on yourself. I would like to say if I'm permitted to say a big thank you to a few for identifying me as an individual to have a conversation with me to enrich the school's uh, Information desk or portal to be more of uh, inspiration to the young ones and my other colleagues and seniors before me. It's gratifying. I'm grateful and to the head, the vice chancellor, and the staff and the management of my school. I'm saying a big thank you and may the good Lord bless and keep you safe for the good work you are doing.